Well, it's not often that you get invited into the home of a champion fisherman. He's won the Australian fishing titles three times. His name's Darren Dizzy Borg of HM Lures. And he's gonna be showing you guys at home and myself from start to finish. No secrets, nothing held back on how to make a handmade lure. And I'll tell you what, he makes some absolute crackers. But make sure you stick around to the end of the show because I'm gonna tell you how you can win one of these and we're giving a few away. One of a kind, signed by the man himself, Darren Dizzy Borg. So, you're looking at making yourself a lure. You wanna go and make yourself a handmade lure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a brief example and I'm gonna show you some tricks that'll allow you to make that lure and make it work so it'll catch you your fish. The first thing you wanna be thinking about is what fish you wanna catch. And that'll give you a good idea of exactly what you're gonna make. So one of the first things I do is I like to design the type of lure I want. So all you can do is design a lure um, from a side on view. So you're looking at it from the side on. So you basically want to look at the shape you want to make. So what I've done, I'll sketch out a few different shapes roughly. It doesn't have to be fancy, you don't have to go overboard, just something rough to get an idea. And you know, I look at them and I go, I think that one's too long. I don't think that one's got enough meat in the front. So this is the shape I'm going to decide to do. It's got a bit more meat at the front, gives me my buoyancy, gives me an area to put the lead, gives me a bit more room to put the wire through. That's what I'm going to go with. So once I've made that decision, I make myself a template. So this is just out of a, a little bit of polycarbonate. I draw around a shape, I go and cut it, I sand it back and I make it as nice as I can and smooth. Put the bib angle in that I want to put in so I know I've got the same bib angle every single time. Then all I've got to do is trace that onto a piece of wood. So now what I've, I've got my template, I've got my piece of wood, I put my template onto that piece of wood and I usually just hold it in the middle and it's very simple. Draw around the outside, trying not to move the template. It's pretty important. See a nice shape. And then the secret here is because I've got this little piece for the bib, is I put a little mark so that I know I need to make the cut slot there. So I take it away and I continue that mark inside so it's in the same spot every time. Now that's ready to put on the bandsaw and start cutting. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little trick here. If you want to make uh, multiple lures at the same time for only half the work, is I get my block of wood and I trace on the, the shape that I want and I try to put two shapes on the one block of wood. But the big secret is I've got two blocks of wood stuck together. But what I use is double-sided tape. It holds them firm enough for me to be able to cut that out in the bandsaw. And when I'm finished, I get one, two, three, four, four lures come out for the work I'd normally do for one. See me cut it, two pieces come out, each piece now breaks apart, really easy, double sided tape, sticks good enough to hold it together but really easy to bring apart and I have four lures cut ready to go start shaping. So the next step is you need to balance your lure out. Balancing your lure out will take you a, a little while to work out. I've spent a lot of time balancing this shape out that I make and uh, I find that I put a little bit of lead in the belly in this area here and I've worked it out, it's about a, uh, a 14 mil hole I drill in at the start and then I, I fill it up with lead, but by the time I finish shaping, it brings it back to only about a, an eight mil depth that I've got lead in it. So what I do is I've got a little mark here that I, I hold the, the lure up to. When I see it hit my mark, I stop. So that means I know not to go any further forward. All I do is I pull it across until I've got it in the right spot 
And then when I turn it on, I can drill that bang straight down into the area I want to go. You can either use the drill or you can use a hand drill. Now, if you're only making a few, a hand drill is fine. I've got a dual press because, you know, when I'm going through, I'm making 50 or 100 of these blanks at one time. So I've got to make it as fast as I can. But you can quite easily do it with a hand drill. All you have to do with a hand drill is make sure that you take your ruler and you take a measurement from the front to the point that you want to go. So if you can see there, my measurement comes out to be 35 millimeters. That's where I'm putting my weight in these ones. Yours will always be different depending on what you want to do. You can bring the, the weight further back or further forward depending on the type of wobble or roll you wish to get in the water. So it's all up to you. This is the part where all the experimentation comes into it. Okay, so now we're going to fill this hole with lead. What I use is an electric lead pot, which makes life really easy for me because I can do 50 to 100 of these very fast. But you at home will probably have to use a bit of an old school trick and find a sinker that's the right size and the right weight for the lure you're using, and you can actually glue it into that hole into place, and that'll be the weight that'll help balance your lure. Right now, we're going to put some hot lead into this timber. And there you go, already gone off, ready for the, the final shaping. Now I've got the uh, weight in, I'm going to round off all these edges. Uh, for convenience, I use a router, which is fast, simple and allows me to do a lot. But at home, anything that's going to allow you to smooth those edges off and make them nice and round is fine. When I was a kid, all I used was sandpaper. If you've got the right wood and it's soft enough, you won't have an issue. It's only with the hard wood that you're really gonna struggle. So, now I'll show you exactly how I do it on the router. Now you've got your round edges, it's going to make sanding the final shape so much easier on your hands. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use the belt sander here and I'm going to finish the shape of this lure um, by taking a little bit off the back here and, and sort of just smoothing everything out roughly and then after that we go to the sandpaper and we start the hand sanding of the lure. So you can now see that those curved edges I put on are still there. I've just taken off a little bit more all the way around and we're at our basic shape. So from this point, it's as simple as a little bit of sandpaper. And here I'm using 40 grit because I want to take it off nicely. After that, you can come back with a bit finer sandpaper if you want. And all I'm doing now is I'm just taking those last few peaks off that are there and smoothing the lure out. <sighs> You'll see it'll take everything out and it starts to become up nice and smooth. Okay, now we're at the stage where we've shaped our lure up. So it's uh, ready to start hardening the wood so that uh, we can get it waterproof. So well, we're using it in a waterproof environment. If any big fish come along with teeth and they start puncturing the outside, it doesn't uh, get waterlogged and destroy the inside of the lure. So first thing we're gonna do is put a sanding sealer on. Uh, we let that dry. And then after that, we usually put two to three coats of epoxy on before we look at either painting or wrapping the lure. A sanding sealer is really easy. It doesn't take much at all. Just put it in and all it is, is just brushing it all over the lure. Make sure that it's nice and wet so it can soak in.
and then we hang that up and I'll let it dry and when it's dry we give it a light rub back with some light sandpaper and then we start the epoxy process okay now our lures where we put the sanding sealer on is dry we're going to put its first coat of epoxy on so what I've done is I've got the uh, scales ready and a little pot ready and we're going to put a little bit of epoxy in we don't need a real lot we just need to, to get a tiny bit in enough to cover this one lure which I'm not used to doing there just over a gram goes in so we're going to make sure we put about 1.2 grams of the second part in now now we'll put even parts of the epoxy in the uh, mixing bowl and we've got our mixing stick so we're going to mix it up but before we start I'm going to show you something you can see in here that the it's all nice and clear there is uh, no milkiness to it that's how it'll start before we mix it as we start to mix it you'll see it goes milky see how it's gone milky now the trick with epoxy is you stir it to mix it up until that milkiness goes out of it and becomes clear again and once you get it back to its clear form it is mixed and ready to go as you can see there it is now clear if you've got good quality epoxies you don't need to mix them for three minutes you can see i've only spent 15 20 seconds mixing this and it's all ready to go nice and clear one of the secrets quality materials well that's part one of our two-part series on masterclass and lure making we're almost halfway there so how do you win one of these lures we're releasing an episode in two weeks from now so that'll be sunday in australia all you have to do in the comments is write HM Lures, but make sure you're a subscriber. We're gonna run it for two weeks, and guess what? We're giving three lures away, personally signed by Darren Dizzy Borg, so a collector's item. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll catch you guys next time. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for the final part of Masterclass in Lure Making. Yeah!